Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons win the grand final. Whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team now world test champions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the TDIF podcast. Thank God it's footy. Sitting here on the couch, two wins for our NRL teams, first time this season. Oh, how good. How good. The arse couldn't make it three from three there on um, Sunday morning, but oh well. We'll settle for two from three, I suppose, two, at this stage. Two from three will take. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that after a... Uh, after the the night that I had there on Saturday, being able to oh, sit yeah. there and, and watch that. Would have been on enough of a ride that yeah. nothing Arsenal could have done would have, oh, would have ruined that. Now. Um, oh, bloody awesome. Um, 66 points on yeah. the board. Not something that you see come around too often. Obviously, our top top ever in our old score, so pretty cool to see there. Um, but, you yeah, know, what a game. Um, really, really, really good game, but... Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to turn that luck into um, any sort of money at all over the weekend. Didn't manage to put up one Just bet the, one the same as you. Yeah, yeah the right. old Dragons one to twelve. Um, couple for me there. Ponga into the Sharkies to win. So got on him. Got on the Sharkies there. Gives me three bucks or so for the week. Um, but yeah, look, still plenty of work to do there. Um, <clears throat> But it's a big week this week, um, or next week, I suppose, is, is the State of Origin Game 1. But um, bit of talk about these squads that have been announced lately. Yeah, um, announced yesterday. Lots of talking points across both sides, really. A few, um, yeah, I guess contentious uh, calls here. A few people maybe unlucky to miss out. A few players possibly lucky to get in there, but... Um, where do you want to start? New South Wales? Start on that. Start with the Blues and yeah, start with the um, Blues. There, I mean, look, I guess the biggest, the big well, calls first, there first in the back calls, line. Yeah, Turbo and Adoka and Luai, four, five, six. There, all possibly um, maybe lucky to get involved in in the starting team. I think, um, I think in the case of Trubojevic and Adoka. Um, Look, it's it's really unlucky for the likes of Campbell Graham and uh, Stephen Crichton there. Campbell Graham initially named at 18th man spot, but withdrawn due to injury. Um, yeah, really unlucky. He's obviously smashing the door down, smashing Freddie's door down, demanding to be picked. But I do think on their day, uh, Trebojevic and Adokar there, probably offer more than Campbell Graham um, if you're going to get a 10 out of 10 Trebojevic performance I don't think there's anyone really that matches it almost in the NRL history and then Addo Carr like there's no faster man in, in, in the world they like to say but um, speeding down the wing there I think you know if, if you can get the best out of those two blokes I think that's the right call and then obviously Jerome there in the six um, huge call Starting over Nico Hines there. Um, that was the big. I think that's going to be the talking point. One. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the fact that Hines has not managed to make his way into that starting team with the form that he's been in, and um, I think the the only really um, reason why those other two might not have made it in is due to injury, you know. So um, yeah, I think that's that there. Luai at six. That's going to be the the biggest talking point there. I think for that that blue squad, at least in that back line there. Yeah, Luai over Hines. Look, I understand um, the thinking behind it. Luai, look, this is the exact same um, New South Wales backline in 2021 and those first two games there that we saw just obliterate records. Um, so if we can get the best out of them and see anything similar to that performance, obviously Queensland, no disrespect to the side that trotted out 2021. This one looks a bit stronger. But I don't know if this Queensland side is stopping a, a Latrell, Turbo, 
nine, ten out of ten performance there. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to definitely going to be tough for them. Um, but yeah, look back on Jerome. I mean, he's been playing well the last few weeks, so I think that might have just locked him in there. Obviously, the combination is a big one with with Nathan there in the halves. So interesting t- to see how they um, inject Nico into the game there, because. You've got seven 80 minute men there in the back, so. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, an interesting, interesting one to see how they, how they get him in there. Um, obviously, sort of that spine, like you said, you know, that combination of Lua and Cleary there, and then obviously the inclusion of um, Coruscant there at nine, um, sort of bringing that Penrith spine back together, and um, we know how good they are when they're all together, so. Yeah, I think. I don't. Appy, it was obviously a huge call for Freddie to make, Appy or Cookie, but um, I don't think anyone uh, of a New South Wales Blues persuasion can be too miffed with the inclusion of Appy there. He's um, yeah, he's, he's played been, well he's when he's had his really well recently. Yeah, so. well, recently he's been playing extremely well, but even in the history, uh, in his couple of Origin appearances so far, he's done well. Um, so yeah, good on him. He's uh, deserved his spot, and yeah, just back to that Penrith combination, I suppose. You've got four of them there in the backs. Um, oh, well, if you include Appy as a back. You've got Nathan, Jerome, and, and Tor there, so yeah, good Penrith contingent, I suppose, even though you're claiming Appy these days. Yeah, exactly, um, but he's got that, you know, obviously from the last couple of seasons there where he's been bossing it, so, um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a tasty looking back line, and then uh, a couple of debutants there in the in the forwards, and by the looks of um, Pangai Jr. and Hudson Young. Yeah, a couple of debutants, yeah. um, interesting, uh, Hudson Young, I think, not too many people can begrudge him a an origin jersey there the way he's been <clears throat> playing over the last couple of years really one of those players that sort of encapsulates what you need for origin that, that tough bastard sort of mentality oh, and center, yeah. him and Corey Horsburgh do that so well in tandem for, for camera there um, so yeah but interesting to see him slotting straight into the starting lineup there I think you know looking back on last year's New South Wales Back rowers, Crichton and um, Murray. Crichton obviously hasn't really played um, enough footy with that um, extended break that he had um, to warrant inclusion in the side, I suppose, and the rest is struggling at the moment. So Freddie's backed a bit of a veteran there and Tyson Frizzell to come back in to a bit of a job and then Murray and Martin on the bench. I'm sure they'll have hybrid roles between what's needed out on the edge and slotting into the middle a little bit as well. Yeah, I think possibly Olakwaru maybe hard done by there. I think, I think so. you know, like one of those he, unlucky back rowers. He definitely could have been involved in it, and um, maybe the only area there where I'd probably change up a few places. I think second row. But Panga Junior. Um, I mean, certainly on his day. Is definitely a, a destructive forward that you know you you can see doing really well in the Origin Arena, uh, but he is prone to a bad day or two. So him and Haas together could be a tasty looking combo. Though, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, the power, just the brutality there. Um, then you bring on maybe Cam Murray once you've worn down the middle a little bit with those two big mm. boys to. Get a bit of leg speed there through the middle. It looks pretty tasty, I reckon. But, um, yeah, uh, Jake Trebojevic, obviously, withdrawing due to injury there. Um, Campbell Graham, we've spoken about him. Ola Kuatu, obviously, unlucky to miss out. But on to Queensland, shall we? Yeah, have a little look at Queensland and, you know, straight in there. We've got a, a, a debutant there starting at the back and... Um, Possibly an, another position there where some Queensland fans might think that um, could have been could have gone differently with Reese Walsh taking the the spot there off um, Caden Ponga. Yeah, so I think 
Reese Walsh form wise has certainly deserved a spot. Definitely well and truly, but he's still quite a Queensland love to lean into that that loyalty angle. Um, picking the blokes that have done the job before rather than going for the the shiny new toy on offer, but that's what they've done this time. But I must say as a blues supporter I am a little bit worried about what Reese Walsh um, would be offering on the night compared to Caelan Ponga in his form this year, but look, either way, you probably can't go wrong for Queensland. Two guns they've got available there at the back. Reese Walsh gets the nod this time. Um, and a little bit of a, I don't know if you'd, if you'd call it copying New South Wales, but um, they've gone for a fullback in a, in a centre position. They have uh, the hammer. Uh, name to pair up there with Valentine Holmes in the centres for Queensland and yeah possibly um, another interesting interesting pick there if you want to lean into that loyalty from Billy. yeah and um, Dan Gago 22 origins in a row he's he's been involved for loves a, loves a try in, in an origin game as well yeah look the, the amount of times he's you know absolutely torn New South Wales up on an edge it's ridiculous so that's one thing but I do think if you're looking at form you can't go past the hammer uh, over Dane Gagai but there would have been plenty of times that would have been the case over the years and Dane Gagai would have still, still got the nod and spot. still yeah. got the job done for Queensland so it is interesting to see Hammer played one game there last year was it or was it the year before I can't quite remember um, might have been last sure. year I think that's the way you've got to do it though if, some, if someone's playing well you've got to get them involved and um, there's no point having someone who's been around for, for donkeys if they're not going to attribute too much on the on the park and you can have someone out there who's um, putting in those performances week in week out so and um, there's another one that uh, he's a worrying prospect for a New South Wales yep, fan there yeah, the form he's in the the speed he has, um, if he can link up there with Talagi, his ex-teammate there on an edge. Dangerous signs for Queensland. Um, but a couple of interesting calls there in the Ford pack for them as well. Um, well, Tino, not an interesting pick uh, necessarily, but lucky to escape a, a little ban there yeah. with uh, the old bumper bars on uh, Reed Marnie in the head. Uh, got away with a fine, I believe. So, Herbie Cumming is lucky stars. He can run out um, in that maroon jumper. Uh, come next Wednesday and do his job off the bench, whether he comes into the starting lineup or not, we we shall see. But Big Tino, he'll be involved on the night, and I'm sure he'll be not too. Uh, he won't be too cut with copping a fine because you get I, 30 grand yeah, back for playing Origin. I'm sure it'll be all right for him anyway. Uh, I'm sure he's, 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 he's on lucky, a good enough contract as well. Yeah, lucky to lucky to be involved though, you're right. There was plenty of talk that he might have to miss out, but makes his way in and as does his teammate there in the in the forwards, David Fafita, back involved in the in the Origin setup, yeah. Yeah, a couple of Titans involved there. Um, big day for Federer. I don't think anyone can begrudge his spot on the side. Another one where... I don't know, is Kurt Cable injured at the moment? Or is he playing um, for the Bronx um, this week? Uh, um, I'm not too sure. I think he might have been named for the Broncos, yeah. So, interesting from Billy that he doesn't go with uh, the man that's got the job done over the last few years for Queensland there and Curdy Capes, but... David Fafita, I mean, X Factor, we know he's got it, but uh, this year he's really shown, I guess that he's keen to get a bit, little bit more involved rather than um, wait for the ball to come to him, which Billy's seen that and he's included him. Um, I think it's well warranted. Playing yeah. some of the best footy of his career. Yeah, he's definitely found his form again, man. He is. He's, Playing some really, really awesome footy, and again another player I think that New South Wales will be worried about. Hundred um, percent, uh, the he'll be he'll be dangerous on an edge, um, particularly if he can isolate Tommy Turbo, and maybe Tommy is still feeling that hamstring, but 
Certainly didn't look like it on Sunday afternoon there. Oh, no, not at all. It was um, um, perfect timing for him to go out there and perform the way he did before um, before those teams were announced. Um, but, yeah, those are, those are the two teams. And I think the team that everyone's been waiting for, uh, that TGIF team of the week, um, obviously a lot of these lads have had an appearance throughout the season and these appearances have helped them uh, get those call-ups for New South Wales and Queensland, respectively. But the the team that they all want to be involved with uh, at the end of the season is the TGIF Team of the Year. Uh, and by making these appearances in the Team of the Week, the, it's going to be a, a nice building block for, for them getting in there. So a bloke we just spoke about then involved in the New South Wales setup. Uh, Tommy Turbo taking the one there for the TGIF team and um, what a performance he had off that, that hat trick. Uh, just looked, looked to be back at it like we said, hopefully that hammy is uh, uh, all good to go but it looked like he was on Sunday. Yeah, um, didn't have any full length of the field really tests of the, the hammy there but um, power was there, Dragon two or three blokes over the line there for his first try and plenty of moments where he's maybe not back to his Del M form but certainly getting there in moments over that game so well done Tommy you've earned your spot on the Blues uh, side next week and you've earned your spot on the TGIF team um, so good on you and joining you there in the number two jersey is one of your mates from Manly uh, Ruby Garrick's another good game from Ruben Garrick um, a player who's sort of under the radar but a bit of a gun really yeah good old kicker awesome awesome player there for Manly and does seem to um, have all the shitload of tries yeah heavy point score obviously there like said as well for the goal kicking so makes his way into the team and joined there on the other wing by a uh, a young Tigers uh, bloke and the likes of Junior Tupo and um, commanding performance by him. Runs the ball hard, uh, got himself a couple of tries. So an awesome, awesome game from him there and uh, makes his way into the team for the first time this season. Yeah, he was awesome. Pretty much any time he touched the ball, he was busting tackles and looking to get that arm free to chuck a little offload in back in field and keep the play alive. Like, I th- I honestly thought it was the, the best we've seen of Junior Tupo so far in the NRL there. He was outstanding for the Tigers, um, but another man who was another level above again for the Tigers. Stafford Toa in the centres there, uh, taking the number three jersey. What a game. Yeah, easily uh, the best player on the park, I'd say. There Saturday night. Um, Another player that every time he got the ball, it looked like something was going to happen, and uh, some rampaging runs, some um, some lovely passing moves, uh, got himself a double as well, I think. Uh, Two tries and a try assist. Yeah. Uh, something like twelve line breaks. Uh, no, not twelve line breaks. Like seven 12, or eight. Twelve uh, tackle busts, possibly. I think it was like five or seven line breaks. Yeah, so some and, and something ridiculous. Crazy stat line. Uh, so he makes his way in there and. Um, Nearly, we should have actually gone for it. We could have got another T there involved on the wing. Surely they would have had five T's oh, in the back the line. Back just five would that. have been all T's. Uh, Garrick's done us in because we've got Connor Tracy there, uh, and in that other uh, centre position there alongside uh, Stafford Ty. So uh, four T's, and then actually five. Uh, sorry, not five. F- four T's, and then two B's in the halves. Uh, the Brown, Brown Brooksy combo. Uh, Dylan Brown, obviously, a really awesome performance there for the Eels on Thursday night. Uh, Killed it. Brooksy in his 200th game. Uh, huge occasion for him and uh, came away after cookies at the end of the night. And um, yeah, awesome, awesome performance. Just running the ball. Like it. when he's running the ball, he's at his best. Um, and he got was able to do that throughout most of that game there on Saturday. So. Uh, yeah, the four T's and the B's, and then there yeah, that one outcast G, 
uh, rounding out that back line there. And then, uh, as always, you've got to get your double barrel involved in there. Uh, we got Tafita Pango Jr., one of my first props. Yep, great game uh, for the doggies and their little comeback uh, against the Gold Coast there. Um, and his propping partner is one of his New South Wales teammates next week. Um, Junior Bowler, a huge game for the Eels and their, their win there. Um, and slotting in between them, another Blues player. So, don't know if um, Freddie's been leaning into this or not. Obviously, the squad's already been, been selected. So, there goes that argument. But, lots of Blue... Blue... Blue jerseys um, off the back this, yeah. of this this team. So perhaps Freddie got into the Google Docs and thought, you know, I'll name a few of these blokes in, in the line. Yeah, who team. knows? Oh. Um, but Appy takes the nine jersey. Wasn't the superstar of, of the night for the Tigers, but um, Again, certainly... Super solid performance. Just pulling the strings. Like, yeah. You don't even need Brooksy to pull the strings. Around when around and... Abby's doing, a, doing the damn thing um, just from the base of the ruck there. Um, good on him. And then the two back rowers, Katoa and Fafita. Now, Katoa didn't really catch too much of this game, but um, absolutely tore it up against the Dolphins. And then Fafita, unlucky to yeah, be able to lose inside. Yeah, able to lose inside, but, but yeah, an awesome performance. And I think they're yeah, really... Kind of like what we said got got him picked for that Queensland jumper. It wasn't really the, the flashy plays. Oh, it but... came at the right time as well, right before that squad got announced. And I think it would have been... A, um, I'm sure Billy would have been watching that game pretty closely and to see how, how that one ended up. So um, they both make that. Uh, TGIF back line there, uh, back row, sorry, and uh, joined by a man who had a beast of a performance, Paddy Carrigan. Paddy Carrigan, what do you say, like nearly 70 tackles, Something nothing less. 68, I Probably think it Probably would have ran for close to 200 metres, so, oh, what a game. Like 119 VB hard-earned index points, I've never seen a score that high. Good on you if you've got him in your fantasy team. Probably would have got you yeah, a got you shitload a few, of points. A few points but, I'd imagine, um, yeah. That's not me. I'm not. I'm not doing a fantasy team this this year, unfortunately. So shout out if you do have him in there. But um, that's the team of the week. Now, it's a bit of a reduced round this week. We've only got the the five. We've games. got the smaller round. We've got the. The big, big round of buys Five there games, for uh, yeah. a few teams. But we start off, uh, still start off Thursday? It is yeah, still I Thursday believe night. Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, uh, Thursday night with the, the Dolphins up against your Dragons. Yeah, um, look, Dolphins coming off a, a losing effort to Melbourne there. Um, don't think they started the game the best. Uh, going down two or three tries early there, uh, managing to make the scoreline a little bit more respectable in the end, but they'll be hoping to bounce back um, with a little bit more of what we've seen from them throughout the year and sort of hanging out, hanging in games and um, allowing those sort of moments for, for the likes of Katoa and Hammer, who's obviously out uh, this week, but, you know, yeah, see, lots of guns like out, said, out in the back line if they get their moment. Like you said before, this is the one game I didn't catch a thing of this Dolphins game last week. I was on too much of a high following that Tigers win, and um, I didn't really think anything was going to live up to that standard, so I, I didn't even bother tuning in for that, that last game of the night. And um, So I'm not too sure how these Dolphins are, are coming in. Uh, into this battle, but having watched you uh, put yourself through that that gut wrenching win uh, there Friday night last week uh, up against the Roosters, it was um, 
Oh, it was it was such an enjoyable game to watch as a neutral, that's for sure. And um, yeah, right at the death, uh, your lads managing to come away with the goodies. Yeah, it was um, it was a thriller, that's for sure. My heart was pumping. Um, sitting there, we we started the game really well. I thought um, off the back of sacking our coach, uh, and it did look like the Roosters were going to steal one away from us that I thought we were maybe not the whole game but most of the game I thought we were the better side um, obviously don't have the the punch that the Roosters do on attack when they do get things right um, but going into half time 12 nil up I was I was sitting there pretty confident um, thinking the boys were going to get the job done but the Roosters bounced back there with Three tries, I think, before the hour mark. Um, Completely turned that game on its head. Just at turning, stage, me, uh, yeah. turning me from a, a happy chappy into a very sad, sad sack, I suppose, sitting there on the couch. But um, Jaden saw across the stripe in the 72nd or 73rd minute, and I was. Not to be back on again. I was happy. Um, but then, look, Tedesco, it was a freakish play. Stripping oh, Moses Sully not there. So, yeah. um, straight off the the kick. Moses Sully did well to bring it down, but just forgot to hang on to the ball tight enough and Teddy was in there with God, the thief yeah, in the night. Nuts. Um scoring what what looked to be the winning try, but um oh, What a play. Tyrell Sloan. Tyrell Sloan with the crossfield kick and Fiona strolling around under the post to make it nice and easy for Zach Lomax to um, seal the deal with zero seconds on the clock. Right? It's not yeah, often you and, see, uh, see that. Did he make all of his kicks? Mm. He missed one from out wide. Missed one and had a penalty. That's so right. I got a penalty. Um, so, what's that? Four from five? Good on him, though. Eight really good effort. Oh, there, and I thought he had a great game. Um, they returned him back to his... I don't know if it's his favourite, but it's my favourite for him. Right edge there with Rabalawa. He looked a lot better. Um, so good on him. But a lot of good performances for the Dragons, which obviously people will be labelling it as the, I guess, new new coach bounce sort of... Possibly, yep. Who sort knows? of jam. So hopefully we can, we can back it up this week with a good performance. Um, we did deal to the Dolphins at home earlier this year uh, <clears throat> but missing Benny Hunt on the origin duty it's going to be huge because we know how pivotal he is to the Dragons and um, our chances of success because you look back at pretty much any Dragons win over the last three years and Ben Hunt has been front and centre of it um, so it's going to be tough without him but I think we can get the job done. Kafusi's band. Hammers out at Oregon. Yeah, it's definitely a different looking Dolphin squad team. Uh, Dolphin squad as well, isn't it? Yeah, a couple of players missing. And um, I, I'm kind of a bit stuck on which way I'm leaning and um, didn't really want to go with one team or the other when I came to, came to my tipping and sort of try and chuck a couple of try scores in there. And I've gone with a bit of a theme here in terms of the hookers. And, yep. Uh, Little and JMK anytime try scores. It's going to be a $17.07. A um, couple of little darts out of the yeah. and you know, know, the couple money. Couple of meters off the edge. Dart themselves JMK, through. JMK, he scored a handful of tries this year, has he not? Just doing that? And I've, I've seen Little do that before for the Tigers, so who knows? Could be on. He yeah, doesn't, doesn't have Ben Hunt behind him, so he thinks, fuck it, I'm going to do it taste, myself. Tasty little return, so. Yep, um, 17 bucks. I like it. Um, good value. I'm just going back to my guns. I went away from it last week. It came off. <laughs> I was thinking to go the Stack same way. Stack with it, but... No, but um, that's usually the way you do it, isn't it? Yeah, you, you get a bit and you move away from it and um, and hope it never comes off again, I guess, if you, until you're on it. Yeah, um, I'll be hoping this one's a repeat offender, though. Um, if we can, If I can wrangle this... Even if I don't bet on it again, I'll just be a happy lad. Dragon's turning plus $6.75. Yeah, 
not a bad way to, to start your week if you can get your bet right and come away with a, a win like that. A big win, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but we head on over to Friday, and Friday's got us uh, teeing up a Eels versus Cowboys matchup Friday night here. For the, the one game of Friday night footy for this week. Um, now, the Eels coming off that big win in the end there on uh, Thursday last week. Feels like it was uh, a year ago. It was um, all those five days ago. Um, but they ended up, yeah, um, putting in a really solid performance, the Eels. Um, I, to be fair, can't really remember fuck all of the game, to be fair. it was. Uh, my, I think my vision this week has been clouded by uh, that Tigers performance, I've got to say. Um, but... Again, I've sort of we've said it a few times uh, over the last few weeks. Are we starting to see um, what we've what we need to see? I guess as for Eels supporters' sakes, uh, to make that a, you know we're not we didn't expect them to be this far down the ladder at this stage of the season, and um, it's it's got to come at some stage, and they're probably up against the Cowboys at the perfect timing. I think, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, yeah. Look, last year's grand finalists d- haven't started the season as we all thought they might, but um, bouncing back last week, beating South, there, twenty points on the end. It's a pretty decent margin um, up against the team I was touting as, <clears throat> excuse me, premiership favourites um, leading into that game. So. Don't know if much has changed in terms of that, but we know Parramatta can lift for a big game. They did it last Thursday night. Now, this week, at home, against an origin-riddled North Queensland side, um, you're right, it is the perfect opportunity for them to continue their form against a side that'll be just absolutely reeling this week. Um with low confidence. But that's probably when we see the worst of Parramatta. But um, a few lads possibly to come in, obviously to come into the side there to replace um, Junior Bolo and anyone else missing there for the Eels? I think they might be I think they might be it, yeah. Just Junior Bolo um, this time around. So they've still got Gutho, they've still got uh, Mitch Moses, Dylan Brown. Lots of guns there to do the job against um Yeah, they're, they're pretty well fully stocked up with the the I'm, Eels there. I'm sure Tommy is Tommy Dearden gonna be released. Um eighteenth man duties. Mm, yeah, so possibly playing yeah. for North Queensland, that'd be good for the cows, but yeah, I do think um off the back of last week's pretty I I'd say as good as the Tigers were, the Cowboys fans, if they look at their own performance Cowboys in isolation, wish, yeah. they'd be pretty, yeah, fucked off with what their boys they turned were out well. So, yeah, 50, like, eight missed tackles yeah, or something like that, 56 missed tackles. That's not a first grade number. No, that's, not at all. That's an under-19s team going up against an under-15s team or... You know, you see it around here, fucking a, a North Harbour first 15 versing like Hamilton yeah, boys, yeah. you know, and it's like, ooh. Um, but I think Parramatta do get the job done this week. Um, but I've steered away from the result because I don't think there was going to be much value on Parramatta. Can you just look my um, odds up for that one? What are we, Gutho, Sivo and Drinkwater? Yeah, so I've gone Gutho into Sivo into Drinkwater anytime try scorers. Um, Where are we? So long as they're all playing. Uh, Gutho, Sivo, Drinkwater, $10.74. $10.74. $10.74. $10.74. So I'll be hoping it's a high scoring game. But, um. And I've gone. See how it uh, goes. Similar in terms of sticking away from the result. Uh, just sticking with those tries. Gutho to come away with two tries. $5.40. Come on, Gutho. So we both yes. need him to score. So we'll be, we'll be hoping for King Gutho to, to get over that dotted line Friday night. But. We move on into Saturday, and we've got the Warriors up against the Bronx now. 
the Warriors coming off that bye last weekend um, up against this Brisbane team who um, not seeming to be falling away a little bit after that start to the season that they had. Uh, losing again up against Penrith this time around. Yeah, uh, 15 to 4, not a scoreline that you possibly would have seen before. I, I don't know how many times that scoreline's been in the NRL, but I would imagine not very many. But it is a bizarre scoreline. Penrith winning by 11 there. Not too many not too many times you'd see a side take the field goal to go up by 11. Um, but I think that one was right on the stroke of full time there with Nathan yep. sliding that one home. So just perhaps giving himself some some game time practice with a crowd in place, pressure of the defenders running at you yep. for a chance of um, maybe slotting the winning field goal for New South Wales come Wednesday night. But... Um, Yep, 15-4 it ended up. I don't think Brisbane fans should be too worried about the wheels falling off just yet. A couple of losses uh, in consecutive weeks, but if you look at the fact that Adam Reynolds was missing for most of those uh, minutes of footy there, barring what was it, the first 10 of that South game he was around for, um, it's not too... Too worrying for Brisbane. They're missing a lot of troops this week. So I'm not expecting this week to probably to be the week they um, make that bounce back. But um, <clears throat> you're right. They, they will have to get back to winning ways if they want to keep up because they've been usurped at the top of the table. They now. have. Uh, they have been to topped there at the top. Penrith um, is the top spot. I believe, after South's loss. Uh, I'm not too sure. I I thought it was still the Bunnies, but... Um, you are correct. Penrith, top on points difference. Bunnies, Sharkies, Broncos, Storm, Dolphins, Wars, Raiders. And we're falling back down again, both of us. Yep. The cellar dwellers. Goodness me. 16th and 17th. At least the points difference isn't too bad now. You've defended well and we've had one blowout, so... Um, oh, but we still, we'll, we'll stay away from that end of the table. But no, you're right, they have, they've been topped at the top. People are sitting there in pole position and um, they are going to have to get back to winning ways. Um, up against the Warriors team, who will be feeling fresh and uh, ready to go and... Obviously, like we said, they're sitting at the bottom of the eight there and wanting to cement their position for some finals for you. So um, it's going to be tough for Brisbane, I think, this one here, down in uh, Napier. Down this in game. Napier, yep. Yeah. So, so Hawks Bay fucking A, I suppose. Um, yeah, get it in you. Yeah, so. Get some of that in you. Um, any Waz or Broncos fans down that way. But um, you'll be hoping that Brisbane can bounce back, but um, me, I've I've tipped the wires to get the win in this one. I just think Brisbane may be missing one too many of their big names. Um, the wires to get a win into DWZ and Sean Johnson to get a try. Can you look that one up for me? The wires to get a win into DWZ and Sean Johnson to get a try. Uh... Hopefully it's got good value. The wise to get a win into Sean Johnson and DWZ. $7.76. Now, yeah, it's not too bad. Oh, yeah, I I've mean, seen better, I've seen worse. Sean Johnson has a day out. I see, I'm... Sure. I'm looking at that Broncos squad who is still looking pretty strong, needing to bounce back. One to twelve, it's going to pull you away. Three dollars ninety, nearly four bucks. Um, I could not go that way, and um, I couldn't go the way of the wires. It was too hard. So uh, it's the way I've gone, and I'll be hoping hoping that comes off on Saturday. Um, but our second game for Saturday, uh, and a smaller Saturday again, we've got uh, Bunnies up against Canberra. Yep, 
south up against Canberra. Um, both sides coming off losses. Both sides were on hot winning streaks yeah, as well. Oh, yeah, five, five and four game winning streaks. So could have been a very different affair um, coming into this one, but. Souths losing Latrell and Cam, uh, Cam Murray to Origin there, and Canberra just Hudson Young after Papa Lee and Whiten announced their retirement, retirement yeah. um, at certain stages this year. Papa Lee, just the last few sort of days there, um, but yeah, Souths losing to Para thirty six sixteen. A little bit of a shock if you consider the form of the two sides, really. Um, yeah, definitely a, a big shock around that one there. And um, kind of now that you've just ran through those those um, players that they're missing, I'm kind of looking at my bet and thinking I'm, I've gone the complete wrong way here. But um, oh, they've still got they've Cody still got Walker, a very Cody. good looking squad there, the bunnies and. Um, and the brand yeah, lighting up for them this week, so a the huge, injury can't be that That was bad. another biggest upset, I think, when you look at the, the Tigers game, but but the Bunnies will be looking to bounce back, I think, after that one there. They'll be, they'll be gutted the way that they played, and um, they'll be wanting to come back strong in this one here, I'd say. Yes, um, I would say so, but so will Canberra after a big loss, uh, 42 I Also, a bit of a shellacking there for, for Canberra, you're right. At the hands of Tommy Turbo and his... Manly crew, um, yeah, just couldn't handle them on the day, as well as Joshy Schuster having having a great game for Manly. Um, yeah, Canberra will be pretty disappointed with that uh, defensive effort there uh, after being so good for, what was it, four or five weeks leading into it. So both sides looking to bounce back and pick up a win here, but... Um, what do you think? It's even even without the trail and Cam, yeah, I'm, Souths can still get the job done. I think they should get the job done. I've gone Bunnies 13 plus into one of the blokes who will be um, coming in for um, a few Origin select, selected players, and it's Blake Taff. Now, I watched him play uh, a game up against the Magpies a few weeks ago and absolutely destroyed us um, and ended up being called up into the squad at the end there. And um, So... I've gone for him into the into a thirteen plus game, and it's going to get you nine dollars sixty, so not too shabby. Um, but I will be needing the bunnies to bounce back strong, that's for sure. Yeah, we haven't really seen much of Blake Taff over the last wee while since the trail made his comeback from that injury. But I like the value you've got on. Yeah, off well, when I saw I saw him in there, and I I did I remember that He's game. A gun. Like, up against the Magpies and he rolled through us. And, He's a guy. Um, so, yeah, chucked him in there and it up that value a wee bit. Um, yeah, well, I like it. I've gone south just to get the plain and simple one um, into Cookie to cross the stripe, get himself a meaty, $6.53. Now, he's going to come out and just give Freddie a little nod and say, Anything happens to Appy, I'm I'm here for game two. I, I'm ready to put in a big performance um, for you, Fred. So, Cookie to score a try. South to win, six bucks fifty three, and that that'll lead us into Sunday, where Newcastle play host to to Manly. Now the Knights uh, coming away with. Um Quite a, a handy, not a handy loss, handy loss isn't the word I was looking for there. Uh, quite a big loft, uh, loss in the end there, uh, yeah. at the hands of Cronulla. 20 points. Uh, 26 to 6 in the end. They were sort of, weren't really in much of that game there. And, no. Um, sort of uh, up against this Manly team who we've just, we just touched on briefly, who coming in in red hot form, but missing their man um, who's providing that red hot form. and. Always seems to be the way with Manly when they're playing well. It's when Tommy's playing well, and uh, when they have those games when uh, when they don't manage to perform, it's when he's missing. So um, it's an interesting one. This one here. Yeah, Manly without Tom Trevojevic, without uh, DCE, without um, Jake Trevojevic for the next six weeks, uh, re-aggravating that calf injury. So. Worrying signs for not only New South Wales on the back of that Jake Trevojevic injury, but 
for Manly as well. Um, yeah, like you said, interesting to see how they do perform there without their star number one um, and without their, their other two guns there. Um, but good signs for them last week were that Joshy Schuster came back uh, absolutely firing. Yeah, he had a really good game. Uh, Slotted back into that team there and he'll be hoping to to do the business again uh, this week with DCE missing. I don't know who they've named that. Uh, Cooper Johns in the house, possibly? Is it? I'd, I would say so. Um, I was talking about it with Jane. And I was going to say, is Garrick named at fullback? Kyle Weeks, Weeks at fullback, yep. We were talking about him. Cooper. Cooper. Cooper Johns, yep. So, look, Manly still have a great side. Um, Just for Zell missing there for... Oh, we've got the battle. We've got Cooper up against Jack, which is pretty cool to see. Some of the Johns boys. Um, um, so that's, that's awesome to see. Uh, I didn't realise that they were both involved this Maddie week. Maddie will be watching this one, hoping for another draw. Yeah, um, he will be, yeah. Because last time the, the two Johns boys faced off, it was a draw. Um, but... Yeah, I think no Travoyevichs, no DCE, might just make it always the seems to be the way when when Tommy's missing. Oh yeah, they seem to fall apart. Um, I, I I found it too hard, and I I realised I hadn't gone to one of my hefty try scoring bets. So yeah, uh, I had to get four in the bag, and I went gone for Dominic Young, sort of one of those certain try scorers you you hope for, like a man. Really, like man. Dane Gago off the back of being snubbed, snubbed yep. scoring himself a try. The same there as Ola Uh Maybe not snubbed as much as Gago there, but maybe just unlucky. Maybe feeling a bit fired up and wanting to put in a good performance a for game two. By, yeah. uh, and then Kula. Uh, Kula, Kola. Uh, Coca-Cola. For, for Manly there. and, and um, He's a he's a hearty, a hearty looking player. Tasty looking player. Uh, just, yeah, I really like watching him play, and I chucked him in there. Adds that value up a little bit. Uh, gets me to $52.36. 38? 38. 38 cents. Uh, I need to get my eyes checked, God. Uh, yeah, so just just about $52 there, and um, I actually boosted it up there as well, so it got me up to 59 so coming in, coming in over a hundred dollars if I um if you get if I can get my return there on a little two dollar bet, but obviously for us, just the one, but it'll be enough to get me a, get me above get you, I'm back, sure. Yeah, get you back to above you even, um back to your above triple digits, so it'll be a good one to come off there to round out the round for you. Um I've gone pretty much the inverse. Um I'm looking for a sure thing just to carry carry me through uh, into Origin there um, and that's Newcastle to win into KP to score any time now he's another lad that's going to be feeling a little bit hard done by missing out on a, an Origin jumper there um, after being cleared by Newcastle medically um, for the game so $2.42 nothing too interesting there but watch out for KP and his headgear to Cross the strike, and um, I'll be a happy man. Uh, but that leaves us with about half the comp or the buy, seven teams. Yeah, uh, the doggies have the buy, come off the back of a, a nice comeback win there against the Titans. Yeah, it was a good comeback win. I was sitting there, Gold Coast went out to an early 14 0 lead, and I was thinking, Gold Coast then in plus my stab in the dark, it's <laughs> it's come off, but um, didn't prove to be a fatal stab in the dark. Um, maybe yeah. like got them in between the arm there or something, because not what we needed either. Our the doggies is, came back um, as Dragons and Tigers fans, the, yeah, the, lift, lifted the doggies and then the bottom of us, leapfrogging yeah. them to 15th there. So, not what we were after, really. Um, we then have the Panthers with the bye coming off that, that unusual scoring win there, 15 to 4. Yep. Um, up against Brisbane, and obviously a nice time for them to have the bye with a f quite a few of their squads. Uh, missing for due to origin call ups, obviously. Oh, yeah, 100%. Half their teams, um, gone for origin there, pretty much. So, 
they'll be stoked. Um, starting to so show form over the last few weeks, um, the old Panthers and especially a few of their main men, uh, particularly Nathan, Jerome and the halves, Dylan Edwards, we know what he does every single week. So yeah, I think we've mentioned it a couple of times, but worrying signs for the rest of the comp if um, Penrith can really get get going because back-to-back premiers into on the half of three in a row. Yeah. Um, it's going to be tough to, signs. tough to stop them, I think. But um, one team that is sort of sitting on the other end of the that train, that ladder, I suppose, the Chooks. Yeah, coming off on the that, other end. That, that, ups, that not upset win, that last The last winner. gasp winner. Win, yeah. Uh, from the Dragons there. And yeah, it's the opposite end of that form train in terms of not really playing the way that we've expected them to play. Um, where are they sitting at the moment? 11th, 12th? Uh, out of the eight, I believe. 11th. So, yeah, really not what we've expected from them. God, you know, look, another couple of losses on the trot. And they're, they're all the way down there with us if we can get a few wins under on a, under our butt. We've got the, 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 sh- the locked in too. Oh, well, so do they, obviously, this week with the bye, actually. But, um, but yeah, so it's sort of sitting down there at the bottom end of the table. Not what, not what we expect from them. Definitely not. Something's definitely going to have to change for, for the old Chuckies. Um, if they're going to reach that top eight come the end of the season, but if there's if there's a roster that you'd want to turn it around in terms of star names, um, if there's a, a coach, Trent Robo would probably have to be up there, and, and that Roosters roster will probably have to be up there. So I'd back them to rediscover their form at some stage, but it'll have to be sooner rather than later for their stage. Um, for their sake, sorry. And then you've got Cronulla, obviously, coming off a, a very comfortable win. Uh, what did you say for Newcastle? Uh, sorry, for, yeah, for Newcastle, a handy, a handy win. A handy um, win, yeah. A handy win for the Sharks. A handy win for the Sharks, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, coming away with that win there, 20 point win. Um, and yet again, another team probably Happy to have the buy at this stage here with with Hines being involved there and that Origin setup obviously such a huge um, factor in that Sharkies team. So 100%, yeah. um, then you got the Storm uh, coming in with the the sure two points this week after uh, also having the two points last week and that one up against the Finns. Yeah, good win for the Storm. They'll be they'll be happy to I guess silence the critics a little bit that after they were picking up a few losses there a few weeks ago. Back back to back, maybe even three in a row they've picked up. So, yeah, um, good signs there for um, the Storm fans and good timing for the bye, obviously missing Harry Grant and Cam Munster to Origin Duties. Uh, Gold Coast as well, as we said. Unlucky to let another... 13 plus lead slip them by but 20 to 18 loss um, I suppose it's not the end of the world but it's not one they'll be too stoked with no um, yeah not the end of the world like you said but I don't think they will be will be too happy with that unable to uh, continue that theme of the their point scoring record over the yeah, last few weeks unable to get the 26 if they, if they had managed to get the 26 there the they would have got the win and it would have been six on the trot i'm sure would have um made quite a few people a bit of money as well i'm sure there were a, a few few punts out there, there yeah. for them to score 26. um and then we we saved the the best to last and that's the tigers who also come away with that two points now I don't know whether the two points gets awarded at the start of the round or at the end of the round. At the end, I believe. Um, but otherwise, we'd be jumping ahead. Well, we already are um, ahead via the points difference via, I believe it's four or five points, something very small. I think it was the last try there uh, on Saturday that got us over. Um, but that would it would take us above into the 10 and it would leave you down there in the bottom. But I think we have to wait. Um, 
so there'll be part of me hoping for a win for you lads on uh, on the weekend part of me hoping that you know we you can maybe come away with that sneaky L and we can jump ahead but um, really I think I'm hoping that that's not the pinnacle of the season I'm hoping that's not our high point and we're on the way down now but um, what a game it was a, a huge occasion there for Brooksy and um, yeah, the score at 66 it was awesome to see like Leichhardt completely packed oh, I've never brain. seen it like that day before it was so loud the atmosphere was unreal yeah um, everyone just absolutely must have been frothing it because um, I mean it's a bit loose to, to call him a Tigers legend, but um, you're racking up 200 appearances for the club. Uh, you're a Tigers legend, yeah. You're obviously a big part of the club there, and there's a lot of stick around Brooksy and his finals record and all sorts of that that sort of stuff, but um, couldn't have asked for a better night on his 200th um, in terms of his own personal performance and... And the team, so good on the lads for, for lifting for Brooksy there. And, oh, exactly, exactly. Um, but, uh, showing the, the potential, I suppose. This is what um, Sheenzy and, well, particularly Sheenzy was talking about pre-season, that you know, they're going to throw the ball around and play some really exciting footy. We've got some really talented young players, and that's exactly what we saw on uh, Saturday night for the Tigers. So oh, exactly. Sure. My my happiest night as a Tigers fan, that's for sure. For a long, long time. Um, yeah. That probably wraps us up for the for the league now. Um, it seems to just get, get worse and worse, unfortunately, for us Arsenal fans now. Uh, a pretty shocking performance, as I said to you the other day. I think it just comes down to us having nothing to play for and uh, Nottingham Forest having it all to play for, trying to start, keep their uh, Premier League status alive. Uh, what they managed to do with that 1-0 one. Yeah. Uh, uh, one year scoring the goal again, a pretty ha uh, handy goal scoring record he's had this year for them. And uh, shout out to Nottingham Forest, actually. I saw a cool thing that um, you know pretty much all of those teams down there in the bottom end uh, of the table have changed managers at some stage this season, and some of them have done it twice. And the owner had come out, he, the owner came out and got interviewed after the game. I don't know if you saw that. Um, and basically said that he, he wanted to stick with the coach who believed in him and trusted in him and Steve Cooper managed to get the job done so shout out to them um, obviously went out there and spent what I don't know how much money they, they got in pretty much two, two, pounds, two new squads I think it was 22 players that, um, that they brought in in the end there uh, enough to play 2 eleven. so um, could have been a huge clear out if they had ended up going down I'm sure there would have been a few players opting to go elsewhere, but um, I just think it was us, yeah, not really having much to play for and sort of being switched off, I think. Yeah, there is a little bit of a case for that. Um, we, I think we mentioned it last week that that was something that we would have to worry up, war, watch out for. Having nothing to play for from an Arsenal point of view um, and not far as with their Premier League safety on the line, um, and yeah, shout out to them for securing it. Um, yeah, like you said, spent plenty of money to to bring in the players and they managed to get them over the line. So shout out to Steve Cooper and his his bunch of lads. Um, Gibbs White, what a player he is. He's outstanding. Yeah, awesome. Uh, he, was white. he was tearing us up. Mate. Really, really awesome performance. Um, yeah, just look, probably just run out of steam, I guess. Run out of emotionally and physically. Um, it's what we've been worried about the whole season, really, that depth of players. And I think a couple of interesting selections, I think, as well. In that, that yeah, it was there, a very but, you know, strange lineup with Thomas Partey running out right back and Kiriel running out left back. Yeah. And White centre back. A few interesting um, uh, ploys there by Arteta. Apparently, we're um, going in for a right back or two in the. Uh, in the summer. I think that'd be good, yeah. Move um, Ben White in, back in as a centre-back option. Um, Saliba, obviously, back into the side. After his injury, um, hopefully we can strengthen and, yeah, not, I guess, 
fall off as much as we did this year and make another challenge. But yeah. we've still got one more game to go up uh -huh. against Wolves there. So we've had two losses in a row. We don't want to Let's finish with Let's not finish three. with three. Come on, lads. Um, go finish with a win. It's a home game. Surely you can go out there and give one last awesome performance for the for the fans who have been pretty good themselves this year, I must say. Um, it's been it's been very loud at most Arsenal games. No matter if we even if we're one or two nil down, um, still pretty loud. Um, support behind the team. So hopefully one last outing and. Arteta can get the lads up and we can see the best of them. Uh, give us a bit of hope for next year going in for another title challenge, fingers crossed. Uh, exactly that, exactly that. Um, now, we take a little look at the the basketball, the NBA. Now the finals are well underway at the moment, but I know that you want to do a, a quick little shout out. You may have yeah. noticed where are we? That side over there. A slight uh, addition, a, a change in the the backdrop yeah, today uh, with the introduction of the, the Kamala Anthony Singlet. Now he's announced his retirement today, I hear. Yeah, um, 20 year NBA career. Went on the same draft as LeBron James, so good on him. Um, obviously, didn't have the longevity of James, but I don't think you can really start off. By comparing yourself to LeBron, that's probably a little bit unfair and you're probably going to fall short in just about every single category there. So what a career uh, for Melo. Didn't end up winning an NBA championship. Um, but plenty of points along the way for the the Nuggets and the Knicks and OKC. Who else did he play for? The Rockets, Lakers, Trailblazers. So... Good on him. Um, one of my favourite players, especially becoming a Knicks fan, and he was there, so good on him. Um, I'm sure he'll enjoy his retirement with hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, but plenty of money, and he can go out there and watch his his, his sons are playing now as well. His son's a pretty good basketball player. I'm pretty sure he might be like coming up last few years of high school yeah, so yeah be, I've seen a few little videos of him if he's good enough he'll be coming through the NBA in, the next in a couple of years. years exactly I'm sure he'll be involved in basketball in some way shape or form now that he's finished so, yeah, um, whether it be involved in the media or some sort of punditry or yeah fuck knows what Carmelo um, wants to do I'm not really too sure if he's too much of a big talker like that but we see plenty of people we don't think a big talkers go into the media so yeah who knows what he ends up doing. He's got enough money to just do fucking nothing. Yeah, just exactly. Sit there and do whatever he wants for the rest of his life. But back into the current NBA. Um, we have one team already through to the NBA Finals there from the West. Demon Nuggets today. Coming off the back, yeah, of a 4 0 drubbing of the Lakers. Um, yeah, Jokic and Co. Managed to watch a bit of this last game today, and it was um, interesting at stages. There were some big leads that were overturned, and um, the Nuggets being, being a little bit too strong for them, obviously, in the end there. And 4-0, um, not what people would have expected, I think, with LeBron James at the helm there for the Lakers. No, definitely. I don't know if that's ever happened before, LeBron being uh, swept in a playoff series. Um Oh, sure, I'm sure it has at some stage, but take some team to topple to do that. Oh, no, no, truly. I mean, it's not just LeBron on the Lakers. They've got plenty of guns there. AD. AD. Um, D'Angelo Russell's a, a good player. Um, you know, plenty of players playing really well for the Lakers, and they did really well to get there, I think, from the eighth seed through to the finals um, in the West there, taking on... Denver, the number one, um, but they're through. The Nuggets, first time in their franchise history. They made it there, yeah. Well done to them. Yeah, finals. Um, and then over in the East, it's not looking good for Boston with Miami taking a 3 0 lead yesterday. Jimmy Butler is just. We could be on track for two. Two 4 0 drummings here. 
Uh, yeah. Never been seen before in, in NBA history. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, yeah. So, I guess that was one of the commentators was saying it was pretty crack up. They were saying that the um, assistant coaches will be panicking a little bit now that they've gone three 0 up because they would have thought they would have had like an extra week to get scout reports on the <laughs> team from the yeah. other side together. To but now they've got to get them like the next day because the finals start like a week earlier now. Um, but. Still one more game for Miami to take out. They're at home. I, I, I'll be backing them to do it. Boston haven't really looked the best from what I've seen. Um, Jason Tatum's really struggling to to score, which uh, we know how important he is for them. He's a, he's a fucking gun. Um, and Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Carl Lowry, they're just doing the damn thing for, for the heat there, so I think you can pretty much lock it in, Miami versus Denver. No team has ever come back from 3-0 down. Yeah, in the it's going to be pretty tough for them, I'd, I can imagine. Eh? So, um, yeah, it looks like a Denver-Miami final. Not um, as classic as not what, what people, people would have been hoping for. Lakers-Boston, no. Lakers or Lakers-Celtics, that would have been probably um, the best... Uh, storyline, yeah, suppose, yeah, it'd be an awesome storyline, but I think it'll be a great final. Or even, yeah, even just LeBron up against Heat, one of his old clubs, yeah, but yeah, Denver versus Miami. You got the big Joker going up against Jimmy Butler, it looks like, and his team. So, who knows who wins? This I mean, one. Bam's been in good form, so there's someone there to sort of battle the Joker a bit, I think, in this one, and yeah, um, I think we could be we could be set for a tasty looking uh final series. Because, yeah, it's going to be, I, I, I have no idea. Two teams coming in 4 nil as well. Very confident if they do. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that probably wraps us up for the basketball. Has there been any news in the darting world? No, obviously we didn't come away with any uh, Rarotonga winning bets. Uh, over the weekend, and it does wrap us up for King of the Hockeys, unfortunately, for the Premier League. Now, we've got two games this weekend in the Premier League. Um, not going to bring you back anything too tasty looking. Um, but we did have a few players' championships over the weekend. We had, um, well, obviously, we've got the Premier League coming up this weekend, sorry, as well. And um, we, are, we are down into our semi finals, we're down to our knockout, knockout darts. Um, and we have got uh, Gilman Price up against Clayton. Clayton's still in that fourth spot there. Uh, and then the Battle of the Michaels in the other semi final. Michael Smith up against MVG uh, to see who Matt takes it into that final. Uh, I believe it's a final night there for the Premier League. But we had two players' championships as well. We had Rob Cross winning there on uh, Saturday night or Sunday night, I believe. Uh, Sunday morning, our time, Saturday night there. And then Johnny Clayton uh, the following day. But they head to Germany uh, this weekend, I believe. The German Darts Open, the European Darts Grand Prix. Uh, whereabouts is this? Um, I'm not too sure where, where that whereabouts that is. Um, I think I might have clicked on the wrong thing there. Anyway, um, but there is there'll be plenty of darts on over the weekend. But no more King Ryokis, unfortunately. But I will. Um, I'll have a look and see if I can try and watch something else out, out at some stage. Um, but that's probably us for this week. Um, now, if you've made it this far, thank you as always. Thank you for tuning in or listening or viewing, however you may do so. Uh, get on your social medias. Remember to give us a like, a follow, a comment, a five star, a subscription. Uh, whatever you want, whatever you like to do to repay. Uh, Pay your faith. Um, enjoy your week ahead. Enjoy your sport. However, you may um, you may be tuning in to what what sport it may be: rugby, league, footy. Uh, and if you're having a punt, remember to do so responsibly. Absolutely, couldn't have said it better myself. See you next week. Stay alive and ciao. Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons win the grand final. 
whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team now world test champions.